All right, let's talk about waves. Uh, in physics, you're going to study two main types of waves. You're going to talk about mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. This particular lesson is covering mechanical waves only. I'll reference some electromagnetic waves, but for the most part, we're talking about mechanical waves. Understand, it basically means it's a wave that's traveling through a medium. So let's first define a pulse. Uh, it seems should make sense once you look at it. Simply, a pulse is a single disturbance or vibration that moves through a medium from one point to the next. This is a pulse. It doesn't look like your typical wave. Basically, it's a single hump. One thing I want to take an opportunity quickly to define is this word medium. You can think of it as material, substance, matter. Of course, solids are a medium. Don't forget fluids are as well, and that would be both liquids and gases. A vacuum, for example, has no medium. So we've got multiple characteristics of waves that you absolutely need to be comfortable with, and I'm going to take the time in this lesson to go through every one of them in detail. And so if you look at this, we've got this red wave here, and I've got all kinds of stuff on this slide here that hopefully you'll understand. Before I come over into this picture here, let's take a look at this box here. Some of the characteristics I'll be discussing are wave amplitude, wavelength, frequency and period, your wave velocity. Another bit you want to talk about here, and I have it basically twice, there's a level, little bit of redundancy here for a reason. All types of traveling waves transport energy. But more importantly, it's the transfer of energy and not the transfer of mass. While mass might appear to be moving, it's really energy that's traveling through the material. So we're not talking about material moving, we're talking about energy traveling. So let's break it down. Amplitude of a wave. Wavelength. Get this thing called frequency, which also will be connected to period. And then you've got the speed of the wave. Take a snapshot of this picture, write it down, and we're going to break down each step individually. But before we do that, let's talk about the two types of mechanical waves that we're going to be studying. The first of which is a longitudinal wave. Your longitudinal waves are the waves that are basically don't look like waves that you would picture if you were to draw a wave or think of a wave. They're the ones that move back and forth or along the motion of the medium or parallel to the medium. For example, watch this video here. This is a great YouTube clip that shows basically a longitudinal wave traveling through a slinky. The Energy is traveling left to right, as well as the slinky itself. A couple things to understand about longitudinal waves. The overall displacement of the medium happens to be the same direction or opposite direction of the direction of the travel of the wave, hence parallel. We can also call longitudinal waves compression or pressure waves. And lastly, longitudinal waves can travel through all states of matter. This is important to understand because the other type of wave we're going to learn about cannot the reason being is because longitudinal waves deal with things moving left and right and they can just bounce into each other to then cause the next thing to bounce and the next thing to bounce. They don't need to be connected for that to happen. You'll find out the other kind of wave requires for the material to be connected. Sound waves are longitudinal waves. Better know this. In order for sound to travel, we're talking about a level of compression. There's another term here called the rarefaction. So the compression points are the spots where the air particles are closest together, and your rarefractions are the spots where the air particles are furthest apart. Sound waves are best described as pressure waves because what we're dealing with is areas where we have high pressure and low pressure, or areas where we have a lot of air and little air. And that process is very cyclic. Understand that we are going to cover sound waves in greater depth in a future video, but, for now, recognize sound waves are longitudinal. And if you can remember they're longitudinal, you can also help remember that longitudinal waves can travel through all three mediums. Because you can hear through air, in the liquid, and although you're not going to put your head in the ground, if you put your head to the ground, you certainly can hear the vibrations in the ground. The other kind of mechanical wave that we're going to be dealing with is called a transverse wave. Now, this is the style wave where the energy travels perpendicular to the wave. So, 
a vibrational disturbance which is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. This is what most would typically draw if I were to say draw a wave. It looks like a wave you'll see in math, like a sine or a cosine wave. It looks like the wave that you'll see in you know a football stadium up and down, up and down. And so you notice that the medium travels up and then down as the energy travels left to right. So the energy is traveling along the direction of motion, uh, not direction of motion, the equilibrium line, whereas the medium is actually going up and then falling back down, up and then falling back down. So the displacement of the medium is perpendicular to the direction of the travel of the wave. This kind of wave can only travel through solids. And this is primarily because the material needs to be connected. Here the slinky is all attached. As your hand goes up and then down, the material has to go up and down with it. Well, what if we were to go through and cut this slinky in multiple segments? As your hand goes up and down, do the other segments travel with it? Or will they stay stationary? They're going to stay stationary. They're not connected. They have no reason to go up and down. Solids particles are connected, more or less at least. And so we're allowing solids to travel up and down along with the wave. Whereas gases and fluids, the particles are not, or sorry, gases and liquids, which are all fluids, the particles are not connected. Hence, transverse waves cannot travel through them. All right, let's break down each characteristic one by one. Let's first talk about frequency. Frequency is defined as the number of vibrations that occur in a given second, or the number of cycles that pass in a given second, or the number of waves in a given second. The unit is the hertz, capital H, lowercase z, which is an inverse second. Recognize that the frequency is determined by the source of the wave, the vibration. If you shake your hand up and down over and over and over again at a certain frequency, then the wave will travel through the medium that you're connected to at a certain frequency. It won't change. Therefore, the medium has no effect on frequency. So as energy transfers from one medium to the next, the frequency of that energy will stay the same. For sound, we connect frequency as pitch. High pitch, low pitch, high frequency, low frequency. For light, frequency is related to color. Red is a different frequency of light than blue. Now, let's look at this diagram over here. Here I've got a wave, a disturbance, it's traveling. And as it travels, uh, or as this wave exists, I'm going to highlight these two dots. Let's count the number of cycles that are existing between those dots. We've got one wave, two wave, three waves. So there are three cycles in this given region of space. If this took one second, so if it took for the wave to travel from dot to dot and only took one second, then the frequency would therefore be three hertz because we're getting three cycles in one second. Period is related to frequency, so they often go hand in hand together. It's the time for one wave to pass a given point in a medium. It's in fact the inverse of frequency. It's how long it takes one single wave, not the number of waves in one second. It is also determined by the source, since it's much likely related to frequency. It has nothing to do with the medium it's traveling through. Well, it deals with the medium, but that, that won't affect the period. So, for example, if we know the frequency of light is 5 times 10 to the 14 hertz, the period is going to be 1 divided by 5 times 10 to the 14 hertz, or 2 times 10 to the 15 seconds. So the unit of period is seconds. It's, a, it's time, so it's going to be seconds. Let's look at this diagram down here. If all, See, we have three waves here. We have wave A, we have wave B, and then we have wave C. If one second exists from the start of this all the way to the end of this. So this whole thing took one second. We want to determine which one has the longest period and then which one has the largest frequency. Well, they're going to be inverse of each other. So whatever has the largest period will have the shortest frequency. And whatever has the largest frequency will have the shortest period. So to figure out the largest period, it would be, again, the amount of time for one wave to pass a given point. So that's going to be the one that really only shows one wave, like wave B took one second. But if we look at wave C, we've got one, two waves exist. So if it took two waves, or if, uh, if it took one second for two waves to pass, then it took a half a second for one wave. So the period for wave C is only 0.5 seconds, shorter period. 
And then we're going to get even shorter for wave A. Looks like we have one, two, three, four waves pass. So wave A has a period of 0.25 seconds. Because it took a quarter of a second for one wave, or a whole second for four waves. Therefore, if it has the shortest period, it will have the greatest frequency, which also should make sense because the frequency is the number of waves that pass in a given second. Well, wave A had four waves pass in one second, and wave B only had one wave pass. So they're inversely related to each other. Amplitude. Amplitude is going to be related to the maximum change in position of a particle from its rest position during a single vibration. Now this is easiest to see with a transverse wave, but it still is true for a longitudinal wave. For example, here I have a full wave. Two waves, actually, right? And this green line down the center here is what we'll call the equilibrium line. If there was no disturbance at all, the medium would lie on this line. But now we have some sort of oscillation or disturbance in the medium. And it's causing the medium to go up and then down and then up and then down, right? And so the amplitude is defined as the distance you are away, the maximum distance you are away from the equilibrium position. So it's this straight shot right here. So you have positive or large amplitude, and then you have your negative amplitudes. Your positive amplitudes are known as your crests, and your low negative amplitude is known as your trough. We often will just say this is positive A, and this is negative A, and this is zero. Therefore, if positive A is one meter, the trough would be negative one meter. All right. The amplitude of a mechanical wave, and it's really important to define it as only of a mechanical wave, because we're going to find out that this isn't true for electromagnetic waves, but for mechanical waves, it's proportional to the amount of energy of the wave. The larger the amplitude, the more energy the wave, ha the wave has. And, and think about it in terms of like a tidal wave or a tsunami. You know, you don't worry about a lot of little waves hitting your ankles because they have little amplitude. They're carrying little energy. What you care about is one big massive wave approaching you. You know that that's going to cause some destruction. Amplitude is related to energy. Another way of thinking about it is a sound amp, an amplifier. If you increase the amplitude, you're giving it more energy. It's going to get louder. So in terms of sound, amplitude is a measure of loudness. In terms of color or light, amplitude is a measure of brightness. Also, understand that amplitude depends on both the medium it's in and the source you do need to have a large oscillation or large jolt of energy introduced in the medium. However, the energy also needs to travel through a medium with low inertia for it to have a high amplitude. So if we're shaking a really lightweight cord, it might get a really huge amplitude in it. But if we use the same level of shake on a heavier weight cord, you might not have as much amplitude. Wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points in phase. I'm going to define phase in a different video, but a good definition is simply two consecutive points on a wave. The symbol for wavelength is this wishbone-looking symbol called lambda. It's a Greek symbol. Wavelength. So if we look down on this wave here, we have a lot of waves. Well, the wavelength will be defined as the linear distance from one point to that point repeated again. That's why we're going to call it a consecutive point, which means these two points are in phase with each other. This is also in phase, and it's one more wavelength away. This is also in wave, in phase, one more wavelength away. But then if I were to instead look at the, say, the peaks, the distance from peak to peak is a wavelength. And they're also in phase with each other. And then the distance from trough to trough is also a wavelength away. Any two consecutive points on the wave it is determined by the medium, not the source. You can have one lightweight medium with a very short wavelength, and then you start getting to a more dense medium, and it starts to stretch that wavelength out more. We're looking down at this um, graphic down here. We've got 
multiple waves here. Uh, three waves take up 12 meters. If we want to know the wavelength of one wave, we're going to pick two points, and that's the distance of four meters. The next two points, four to eight, still four meters. The next two points, eight to 12, still four meters. You could have gone uh, these two points, two to six, four meters. It doesn't matter where you pick. It's going to be the same distance. Wave speed. Well, speed, in general, is defined as distance over time. So it's no different for waves. I mean, we don't even need to technically call it wave speed. It is simply the distance the wave travels divided by the time it takes to travel. Or the number of meters a single cycle travels in a given second. Now, I mean, if we look at this as speed is distance over time, we're going to use wavelength for distance and period for time which means these are the same equation which is true because remember frequency is 1 over period or period is 1 over frequency however you like to remember it the speed of a wave does depend on the medium it'll travel faster through the lower dense media or the medium with lower inertia and uh, slower through the heavier medium or the more dense medium and your unit is still going to be a meter per second just like any speed Alright, that's it for wave characteristics. Um, thank you for watching.